Hello, my name is Heather Wensler, and I appreciate you tuning in today. Following the presentation, I will provide my contact info, so be sure to stay tuned. Thanks again. So, let's get this thing started. So let's look at how we can use Poly to set up polls for our teams, right? Whether it's a team's um, conversation, just a, a poll in your classroom, say, or a poll in a meeting, or actually during a meeting, sending out quick polls. Now I'm gonna be share, sharing the free version, which limits the responses to only 25 responses. Once you've got 25 responses across any and all of your polys, your polls, you have to upgrade to, um, to purchase more. So that's entirely up to you. It depends on how much you're gonna use poly. If you have a small group of people and you're once in a while gonna use it, then the free version's fine. It resets every month. So it's 25 responses over the course of the month and then it resets itself. So how do you do it? Well, there's a couple of things that you might wanna consider. Sometimes you might wanna have a poll for um, everyone in the team to respond at their own time. You're not in a meeting and you just need to post a quick question. You can do that directly in your conversation in the posts tab for any one of your channels. So I'm just in one of my teams, I'm in the general channel, but it wouldn't matter um, which channel I was in. I'm gonna click new conversation. Now, I'm sure you've noticed, and if you've seen any of my videos, you may have been wondering what all these other extension thingies are down here at the bottom. Because when you first start a team, you you have your formatting, your file attachment clip, you have your stickers, your GIFs, and your emojis, and it comes with stream and praise, but you can also add additional extension apps. And you can do that over under, I'm underneath the posts bar where I would type my message. There's that ellipses over here. And if you click on the ellipses, it will give you some apps that work well with messaging. And you can find Polly by simply typing Polly and selecting Polly. Now there's other um, a different apps that you might choose, but I'm focusing only on Polly today. So you can add Polly as a message extension. If you want more apps, you can even click on more apps and see what other types of apps you can add to your conversations uh, box down here. So I've got my Polly, I click Polly, And depending on your speed of your internet and whether or not you're signed in, you may need to sign in with your Microsoft account. Let's make sure I type the right password and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed here. Yay, it was the right one. Okay, so once you're signed in, again, you get 25 responses per month. You can purchase additional. So if you're gonna use this a lot, might be worth talking to your administration to see if that's something that you could work out. You can create a poly from scratch where you type in your question and your answer choices, or you can select a template. Now, if you're going, if you have multiple teams and you're gonna wanna give this poll across multiple teams or multiple channels, I suggest that you add anything you like to your templates. It'll make it easier because you can't just copy and paste. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's do an ask me anything. I'm gonna click preview and send. And all this is exactly what it's gonna look like. I will type in my question and my respondents will be able to answer um, in text and click submit. So I'm gonna click edit. And this is where I'm gonna type in my question. And again, this is just an open-ended um, question. So you can have sing one question or you can have multiple questions. You can see who your audience is. In other words, pick which channel you want this to go into, or you could send it as a direct message. Either way, your respondents are gonna get a notice in chat that there's a poly waiting for them. 
Notice here, I can also select additional templates. Is this gonna be a question I'm gonna ask in a recurring fashion? Um, if you're thinking about social emotional learning, it might be something that you wanna ask every day or every other day, such as, you know, how are you feeling today? Um, so you can make it a recurring question. You can send it now, or you can send it and schedule later. You can even add reminders, but those are only working if you have teams with 100 members or less. So this would be a reminder to complete the poll um, after a certain number of days go by. And then you choose your question type, open-ended, multiple choice. It could be a rating question. In this case, it's going to be open-ended. And this is a template where I'm asking them to ask me a question. So what question do you need answered? That's going to be my question. That's going to be the poll. It is a text type. Um, you could also choose date or time, but this is a text. Do I want people to make comments on this poll? I'm going to say no, but you could have comments. Please share your thoughts related to this particular poly. And then here are your results settings. Do you want the results available to everyone after it closes? Do you wanna share these results in real time or not at all? In this case, because I'm asking for people to ask me questions, I don't want the rest of the audience to know. And then, do you want your audience to be anonymous or not? Now, here is where I would save this to my template. Oh, my send at, we're gonna send it now. I'm gonna save to template. Um, so this is my ask me anything. That way, when it comes time, I can, uh, I can get to it at another time and not have to retype all of this. All right, so I click close and I'm right back to my poly. I'm gonna preview it before I send it just to make sure it looks the way I want it to. That's exactly what everyone's gonna see. So I'm gonna click send. Okay. So a couple of things, notice I have a chat message here. So that's the note that Polly has uh, been posted. And here is my question and my results. Now, my members of my team are not going to see this. People who respond, who are my respondents, they will not see the, the results, only I have access to that. So that's the quick and easy way to do a poly. You can post it directly in posts. Now, the other way that I'm gonna use it is for Teams meetings, and I'm gonna add it as a tab in a meeting. So I'm gonna come over here to my calendar, and I'm going to use, you know, just open an old meeting. All right, so when I click on a meeting from my calendar, you have the option of chatting with participants. So what I would do prior to a meeting was I would set up my polls in advance, my questions in advance. So in fact, let me go to a totally different meeting because I know I don't have any set up. So here I go. I click on the meeting where I want to set up my poly and I'm going to click chat with participants. So this is something that I can do in advance of my meeting so that I'm prepared. So I can chat with my participants here. I can add files. I can uh, start meeting notes. I can start a whiteboard. But if I click the plus sign, I can also add Polly. So I can, the first time I do this with a meeting or each meeting that you add Polly to, you have to actually add it. I get the notification that it's been added, and then I'm going to click save. Notice I didn't actually create my poly yet. So again, I'm still in Teams, but I'm in the collaboration space within a meeting. So this is not going to be posting in a channel anywhere. I'm just getting this set up so that it's gonna be ready to launch at a meeting. All right. Now again, I'm still limited because it's one account, it's limited by account, not by team or channel. I have 25 responses that I can collect per month. 
I can select from a template like we did before, or I'm going to click create. We'll create a brand new one. So it could be a question, it could be a quiz, great for CFUs or exit tickets, or we could have trivia before the meeting starts or after the meeting ends. So I'm going to do create question. And this can be multiple choice, open ended, or I could ask them, let's do a rating. So this could be agree, disagree, one to five, one to 10, or if you've got younger participants, stars and emojis, um, I'm gonna do one to five. So rate your day is gonna be my prompt. So my one is going to be, uh, two is going to be meh, <laughs> three is gonna be okay, Four is going to be darn good. And five is going to be great. All right. Now, when do I want my results? Do I want them in real time only after they close or private? Meaning I'm the only one who's going to see the results. I'm going to do them in real time. And then I have the choice of making them anonymous or not. And for this, I'm going to say they are anonymous. I click save. All right. Notice nothing's happened yet. It's ready to go. From here, that's just the drop down menu so I can see what my choices were. I can edit the question, I can delete it, and of course, I have my manage controls. I can share this to another person or another team. All right, so now let's say I want to send this out in a meeting. So again, I'm now going to join my meeting. I'm going to click join. I'm going to turn off that and I'm going to join the meeting. Okay, so I'm in my meeting. I'm in the desktop app and notice I have my poly here. Now it works the same for Microsoft Forms. You set it up in advance and that's how you get it to show up in your meeting. So I'm going to click poly. And there it is. So there's my question. If I click send now, everybody in the meeting gets this, even me, we, I can answer my own prompt. So I can choose my answer and everybody in the meeting, of course there isn't anybody right now, but if they were, they would be seeing this exact same screen. So whether that is a meeting with adults or a meeting with kids, they get the same experience. And then I click submit. Now this is happening in the chat. So if I click on chat, because I kept this anonymous, but real time, then everybody is able to see these responses, but notice my name is not attached to it. So because of the way I set it up, it's in the chat within the meeting. So I can come back to Polly. I'm the only one who sees this tab because I'm the organizer of the meeting. Nobody else sees it, but I can create an additional, maybe it's a quiz. So I can give it a quick title. CFU, which is correct. And then let's say I'm going to give them two statements, choice one or choice two. I choose the correct choice. So I'm going to say A and B, and then let's change it to A. B is the correct answer. I can add additional choices here. So if I want to make this a little more challenging, and then I click add question. Close out there. And here, oh, I was adding an additional question. I don't want that. I actually want to save. So results visibility, that's why it didn't show up, but I was kind of wondering. Okay, so I'm creating my quick quiz. I can change the number of points. Let's make it five points. Which of these two statements is correct, A or B? B is my correct choice. I can add C, D, E, F, G. I can add another question. And when do I want to see the results? After it closes or do I want to keep it private? So let's do after close. I'm going to click save. Okay. 
I'm going to close this first poll. So nobody else, once you close it, nobody is able to respond to it any longer. And here's my CFU that I did. It's a quiz, it's ready, and I can click send now. And just like before, it's going to show up right in the middle of everybody's screen. Let's give it a second. I'm going to click over to the conversations instead of, I'm going to click out of Polly and go to our conversations, our chat. Hmm, my internet's a little slow right now. Okay, so it's loaded. And notice over here, I'm in my chat now. So I'm going to start the quiz and let's see what happens. Again, my internet seems to be a little slow, so I apologize. Okay, so I clicked start quiz. It had already started, so it's not necessary that you click start quiz, but let's say I'm gonna choose B and submit my response. Okay, let's see what happens if I do it here too and click submit. Okay, so there was the response. I got to see that I got it right. I got my five points. Let's come back over to Polly. I guess everybody's on the internet right now. Okay. So there we go, I'm seeing my results. I can look at my results details. So my leaderboard, I can look at my question and I can see which user made the answer. Now I'm the only one here, so it's me of course. But I could also click on this drop down, and I could quickly go through the meeting participants by name and see who got it correct if I needed to. All right, so I can see that the person in here got it right. I click close and now my quiz is over. Nobody's able to answer that question any longer. And then I can exit out. So that's just the very basics for how to use Polly again. The free version is limited to 25 responses, not 25 polls, but 25 answers, 25 people putting answers in. So if you have a small group or if you're not going to use it um, very often, that might be fine. But if you do need more responses, check with your administration. It might be worth investing because it can really do a lot and um, it's very simple to use and built right into Teams. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found the video helpful. If you do find yourself in need of support, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach out to me through my website, wensleredconsulting.net, or send me an email at wensleredconsulting at gmail.com. And of course, if you like the video, please head over to my YouTube channel to like and subscribe. Thanks again, have a great day, and cheers.